I'm Nick Timmy and I work at Madhouse Motors. We moved to Blue Hill Avenue um, just a year and a half ago to this nice new shop. We got to build out exactly the way we wanted to. Um, the company kind of started in the backyard uh, 12, 13 years ago, around 2010, um, where Jay was working. Uh, just to kind of put herself through college, literally just doing you know, oil changes and tires in a backyard, whether it was rain or shine. Um, and the business kind of grew from there. Um, went through a couple different shops. It was in Somerville, it was in Austin, and now finally we're here. I've been with the company for about three years. I started as an apprentice. I was uh, just kind of a friend of the company, just kind of hanging around, learning what I could from the people here, uh, until finally I convinced them to kind of take me seriously and you know, kind of went through more intensive uh, apprenticeship program with them uh, so I was eventually hired as a mechanic. Uh, it's been an awesome learning experience all the way through. Uh, this is the kind of shop where you're working on like anything. Um, most shops will turn away things, you know, dealerships for sure, like can turn away anything over 10, 15 years old and will be brand specific, but we kind of work on it all. Pretty much anything other than Hyacin or scooters or mopeds. Uh, so yeah, one day I can be working on a bagger, we're working on a street glide, or the next day working on a vintage Honda, or even you know getting to help out with some of these restoration projects over here. Um, so typical day at work, it's always fresh, it's always something new. Another cool thing about my day to day is kind of being adjacent to you know the custom builds, and you know even getting to put my hands on them here and there. Um, specifically, you know these you know uh, personal projects of our owner Jay, um, the most recent set um, of builds, it was actually two bikes rather than just one, uh, it was a series called the uh, Optical Conclusions, um, which was two identical uh, Harley Aramaki Sprints, 1972, uh, 350 cc's. Uh, the two bikes were actually like 400 off from each other on their bin, you know, they were like twins, kind of somehow kind of found their way back to each other. So she built two identical um, bikes, though kind of paralleling each other a little bit. It's twin got sold and is in Canada um, at present, but pretty cool bikes. They're largely like uh, found objects, kind of taking them, um, taking found objects and applying them to motorcycles where they make sense. Uh, for example, this headlight itself is actually part of a microscope. Um, the high beam, low beam, is as well part of a microscope would be uh, a lens and filter. It's kind of fun to play with. Here was the coil of the old shock because I'm a nerd. Um, the whole bike got stretched back by about eight inches from these water jet plates that I had made. Um, I about all this. Yeah, it's the, like the tail light is made out of a pencil sharpener um, with two LEDs in it for you know running light and brake light. The whole bike is also has a secondary wiring harness so that you can plug it into a standard like outlet and leave the lights on for extended period of time. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of strange details that are there and you kind of see more as you get closer and closer to it. Um, I cut out the whole um, secondary structure of the mainframe that ran um, from the neck down to here. Um, and reinforced it with uh, gussets. I also cut the rear subframe and heated it and looped it back to itself so that we can get this nice, this nice line of the mainframe. So the stock bikes, this frame part actually went back, which is where the where the seat would be. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of kind of small, bizarre details that you'll see the more you get into it. like much now but this is the future site of the cafe at Madhouse Motors. Um, in here we're gonna have a full service coffee shop, a retail area with all of our merchandise that sort of thing. It's gonna be kind of a destination spot for you know riders uh, also you know a place for um, our team and our friends to hang out as well as our community to come in and just enjoy a coffee. Uh, it's, we're really looking forward to uh, it being open up uh, hopefully by the end of the summer.
64, 65, Harley was trying to compete with you know, these Japanese smaller displacement engines. Um, and in order to get into that game, as well as to get into the small displacement uh, racing bikes, they picked up an Italian company called Aramaki, uh, which is actually like an aviation company, but we're also making street bikes at the time. Um, so they picked up Aramaki, specifically their 250cc uh, engine platform, and they expanded that to a 350cc. So it's a single cylinder, um, and Harley was able to kind of get their name in the small engine racing circuit. In fact, uh, I think it's 69 and 70, uh, a Harley Aramaki Sprint, 350cc, took second place uh, in Isle of Man for two years. Um, so, I mean, it's certainly an impressive feat. Turbocharged Aramaki. I housed all the oil for the turbo in the tail section. Um, it has a, it's a dual scavenge pump setup, so it's draw through and it's pulling from two different scavenge pumps to run the oil separate of the motor. Um, one of the scavenge pumps is down here. The second scavenge pump is on the other side. It exhausts out of a saxophone, which is a little ridiculous. Um, and yeah, again, all the oil for the turbo from the tail. All the electricals are built into the tank. Batteries built into the tank. Um, they run under the seat. The headlight and tail section are made out of microscope parts. The belly pan is an old milkshake mixer, which holds the secondary scavenger pump and runs wiring for a light down there. The front uh, brake cable route is inside an old bicycle chain guard. Um, the rear chain guard is off an old weed whacker. Both brake arms are from old bolt cutters. The mirrors are parts of microscopes. Um, the seat is just a hot, tiny pan that I made, um, had West from Counterbalance upholster it. Uh, the whole thing is really sketchy, kind of dangerous, made as a art bike. But yeah, it's just kind of a strange, bizarre motorcycle I built. generously gifted from a collection of bikes, of old British bikes that I was selling for a widow. Um, her late husband had a remarkable collection of old bikes, everything ranging from Bella sets to aerials to old BMWs, um, Scott Flying Squirrels, crazy machines that I was um, commissioned to sell. And as a gift at the end of the sale, she gifted me what I would consider one of the most iconic bikes. Um, I'm going to take my time rebuilding it. I got the engine freed up. Um, I have all the parts, believe it or not, up in the bins. It's going to be sort of my, my long-term project. Not to do a museum quality restoration, but more of a, you know, utilitarian, everyday rider restoration. So not redoing paint or anything like that. Um, hopefully it's not on the table for too long and I'll be Know, getting it down probably within the next couple months and hopefully on the road. very excited. It's something we look forward to every year. Um, it's the biggest party in Boston, the best party in Boston. Uh, and sadly, we missed out on it for the last two years, so we're, we're really excited um, to see what people have uh, in store for us. It's a community moto show. Uh, you can submit your bike just by showing up. Anybody can submit, and it's people's choice. Um, you know, people walk around, put ballots on bikes, and at the end of the night, uh, we tally them all up. and. Uh, those lucky people will uh, walk home with one of these fine trophies um, made by John Bander, aka Notorious Weld, a fantastic welding artist, and my cousin. Gotta plug him. Um, so I'm really excited to see uh, 
what's in store for us, both motorcycle-wise and uh, just overall debauchery that the show ends up being. Yeah.